Praise the Lord. Good morning. This is my third take of this. This has got encounter number 26. I'm having a hard time getting everything together. So praise Jesus. What I want to talk about today is going back to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. So if you bear with me just a minute, i got to look up on the screen because that's where I have it. I don't have the, the my paper Bible in front of me, and I do love my Bible. Um, but God created everything. Amen? Do you agree with that? I mean, I know the atheists won't because they think, oh, no, God, then we got the Big Bang Theory and all this other stuff. No, 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 no. I'm not even going to get involved in that because I will I will go to the scriptures and show you you're liars and you're wrong. Anyways, so God has just created man, all right, man and woman. He told them to be, multi to be fruitful, multiply uh, the earth and subdue it and so on and so forth, okay? But then, beginning at verse 29 of chapter 1, <coughs> excuse me, this is what God said. Then God said, Behold, then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves on the earth, which has life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. Verse 31 is very important. Listen, God saw all that he made, and behold, it was very good. So if God declares something is very good, then it's good. Let me give you an example. Not too long ago, I was on, uh, I think it was Facebook, and I saw a man get on there, a so-called, no, it was YouTube, a so-called scientist, whatever he was, some sort of a doctor, and talked about how you shouldn't eat tomatoes because tomatoes are not good for you. Excuse me? Tomatoes are very good for you. One of the best fruits we could ever eat. A lot of men don't realize this, but the more tomatoes you eat, especially cooked tomatoes, the less chance of prostate problems you're going to have. Check it out with your doctor, because that's what my doctor told me. I don't have a prostate issue. And the doctor even said to me, do you eat a lot of tomatoes? And I said, you bet your sweet sapsucker I do. And guess what? He said, it's because you eat tomatoes. It's just one of the one of the foods I eat. And so I got thinking about that, and then, and then I read another one or saw another one where they talk about eggs are bad for you. Oh my God, people, give me a break. Eggs are bad for you? Oh yes, the yolks are bad for you, or maybe it's the whites that are bad for you, whatever the case may be. Look, just because you don't like tomatoes or you don't like eggs, don't try to force your opinion on me that they're bad. Then I saw a video about a man who claims that Chick-fil-A is bad for you, the products of Chick-fil-A. Even though he had eaten Chick-fil-A products himself, now he's telling everybody they're bad because of all the additives. I got news for that guy. Additives have been added to foods for years upon years upon years, whether this clown realizes it or not, okay? So just because he doesn't like Chick-fil-A, or maybe Chick-fil-A gypped him on something, I don't know what the case may be, you know, don't try to force upon the rest of us that Chick-fil-A is bad when Chick-fil-A, their sandwiches, I love them, and I'm going to eat me a Chick-fil-A. By the way, Chick-fil-A is about the only fast food restaurant that I go to anymore because it does serve a good, healthy piece of chicken. And I know chicken is very good for you. I am a chicken lover. I don't care whether you like it or not. I eat chicken. And I like fried chicken, I like baked chicken, I like chicken, <laughs> period, all right? So, but what I'm trying to say is stop forcing upon people the thoughts that you think that, that uh, or, or, or the idea that you think that something is bad, just because you think it's bad or your research has declared that it's bad, nah, 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 nah. Stop doing that. Stop t proving, to, stop saying to me that I can't have something or that I can't eat something just because you don't like it or because you think it's bad for you. And then we get into the book of um, uh, book of Acts, all right, in the Bible, the New Testament, and we we find out that um, that Peter Peter had a vision one day. He was up he was up on the roof. And uh, let me see if I can find it here. And okay. So Peter became hungry and said and he was desiring to eat, but while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance. 
and he saw, and the sky opened up, an object like a great sheet coming down, lowered by four corners to the ground. And there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures on the earth and birds of the air. A voice came to him, said, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, <clears throat> for I have never eaten anything unholy or unclean. Talking about Jewish tradition, Jewish dietary laws back in the book of Leviticus. Again, again, a voice came to him a second time, what God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. This happened three times and immediately the object was taken up into the sky. So in other words, God was giving Peter permission to eat the things, the four-footed beast and the crawling creatures and everything else was on. We don't know exactly what was on there. We have no idea. Peter didn't distinguish it, <clears throat> excuse me, or say what they were. But the idea that if God says something is clean, it's okay to eat and see. If God created the tomato to be healthy for us, then eat tomatoes. If you don't like tomatoes, that's on you. Don't try to force your tomato-hating ideas on the rest of us. Uh, the same with, with, with Chick-fil-A and McDonald's and Burger King and all these other, other restaurants. Um, people may even tell you the spaghetti's bad for you. I don't know. But to tell me that I can't eat eggs or that I can't have bacon along with it or that I can't uh, have a hamburger, no, 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 no. Don't tell me that. Please don't tell me that. Keep that opinion to yourself. If you want to share why it, you feel it's bad, that's fine. But don't try to force your opinions on other people. You realize that God never forces anything on us? No, he doesn't. God has never forced anything upon us. What he's done, he's provided everything for us. He provided good things for us. Then he gives us free will to choose what we believe is good for us, what we believe is not good for us, and so on and so forth. So before you force your views upon somebody, before you force uh, your rituals and everything else, you know, go to God first in prayer, you know, and research everything and get facts to back up what you're saying back up what you're doing so on and so forth and just stop trying to force everything upon other people because what may be bad for you is okay with me and again i'm gonna let you know right now anybody that doesn't like chick-fil-a we're gonna argue because i'm gonna eat chicken and i'm gonna eat dunkin donuts and i'm gonna eat sheets donuts and i'm gonna eat a burger now and then <laughs> at my house so praise god but this this listen we just need to stop forcing ourselves on other people. God never forced himself upon any man. God never forced himself on any man. I'm going to keep reporting that. God doesn't force himself upon people. God gives us free choice, free will. And that's the way God operates. Shouldn't we do the same? This is Pastor Dale. I know that I'm going to get some comments on this. That's okay. I can handle it. I'm 78 years old and I'm a big boy now. God bless you. I love you. Have a great day in the Lord Jesus Christ.